Hey everyone, welcome to Dr. Mungli's channel. So, in this video, I will be going over uh, vitamin C and zinc. So, especially I will be concentrating on metabolic functions of vitamin C and zinc and also I will go over briefly deficiency manifestation of both of these. jump into that. So, what exactly is vitamin C? Vitamin C is also called as ascorbic acid or ascorbate. Now, as you might be knowing the good sources of vitamin C is citrus fruits. Citrus fruits can be lime, lemon, grapefruit, tangerines and all that. And then red bell peppers which has got higher uh, uh, three times the high concentration than uh, citrus fruits. And then we are good sources of vitamin C is berries, kiwi, broccoli, potatoes, brussels sprouts, all that. Now, note that uh, vitamin C is not synthesized in human body. That means we will have to consume that in our food and also it is not significantly stored in our body. That means we need to take every day vitamin C rich food to meet our uh, recommended uh, dietary allowance which is around 40 milligrams per day. Now, what happens if we do not take sufficient vitamin C? So, when we do not take sufficient vitamin C, obviously the biological functions of vitamin C will decrease and that will summarize uh, as a manifestation and we refer that as scurvy. So, the deficiency manifestation of vitamin C is called as scurvy and that mainly affect uh, our skeletal system uh, especially the collagen related uh, uh, tissues. Now, uh, what happens if you consume a higher content of vitamin C like what happens if we consume more than 1000 milligrams of vitamin uh, C per day. So, when we consume excess vitamin C all they do not have a serious uh, side effect because of it is a water soluble it we can excrete that in our urine, but still it will it can lead to uh, diarrhea it can lead to flatulence and uh, it can lead to stomach pain. Okay. So, uh, when we decrease the content of vitamin C uh, in, uh, in supplementation when it is exceeding 1000. So, as we decrease so the toxic effects will also go down. Now, let us go over what are the functions of vitamin C as you see here in this particular uh, picture. So, it has so many functions in our body let me brief it out to you especially I will concentrate more on its um, uh, biological functions on gene regulation, enzyme regulation and also on immunity, vitamin C role in immunity. I will be concentrating little more on that part. Okay. So, it is a potent antioxidant it, and it acts as a coenzyme for uh, many uh, uh, enzymes that are in uh, biological processes and also synthesis of collagen molecule. Vitamin C contributes to immune defense by supporting various cellular functions both innate and uh, adaptive immune system both cell mediated and uh, humoral uh, immunity. Vitamin C supports epithelial barrier function against pathogens and promotes oxidant scavenging activity of the skin thereby potentially protecting against environmental oxidative stress. Vitamin C accumulates in phagocytostic cells such as neutrophils and can and it can enhance chemotaxis, phagocytosis, generation of reactive oxygen species and ultimately it helps in microbial killing. It also needed for apoptosis and clearance of the spent neutrophils from sites of infection by macrophages thereby decreasing necrosis and potential tissue damage. And also note that the role of vitamin C uh, in lymphocytes is less clear, but it has been shown to enhance differentiation and proliferation of B and T cells likely due to its gene regulating effects. Vitamin C deficiency results in impaired immunity and higher susceptibility to infections. So, whenever we get infection active infection that will actually increase the demand for vitamin C because our body needs that especially the uh, especially white blood cells which need to take care of infectious agents 
needs this vitamin C. That is why there will be increase in demand for vitamin C. So, it makes uh, sense that we will have to provide higher levels of vitamin C whenever uh, a person has uh, active infection going on. So, uh, in contrast, treatment of established infections requires significantly higher doses of vitamin C to com compensate for this extra demand compared to prophylactic doses of vitamin C to prevent infection. So, when it is a prophylaxis, so um, it is around like need, uh, the amount that is needed is around 100 to 200 milligram per deciliter. When it is an active infection, so it is little higher than the prophylactic uh, dose. Okay. So, that is uh, about uh, uh, vitamin C which I have explained the function of vitamin C there. Coming to zinc, zinc is it is an important trace element which is present in most of our cells. It is second only to iron in our body in terms of quantity and also note that it is virtually present in every cell that means it is participating in many of our biological uh, functions especially catalysis and regulation of enzymes which are involved in metabolic processes. And also uh, we, zinc is needed for proper immune system functioning. It plays a great role in uh, cell division, cell growth and uh, wound healing process. And also it is needed for sense of smell and taste and it is needed during pregnancy, lactation and childhood uh, for uh, growth and development and most importantly zinc is necessary uh, because it enhances the action of insulin and you know insulin has got great metabolic role in our body. Now, the optimum zinc level in the body will strengthen our immune system and it will reduce the ris risk of infection. That is why whenever there is an illness, uh, we supplement uh, zinc uh, whether it is a bacterial viral infection or whatever the type of infection it is we supplement zinc so that our immune system is uh, uh, strengthened and also zinc supplementation during illness may reduce the severity of infection compared to uh, when the optimum levels of zinc is not there. Now, coming to the food sources, what are the food sources for uh, zinc? Uh, most of the zinc it will come from animal proteins because animal proteins are good source of zinc compared to uh, plant proteins uh, in terms of its bioavailability means the whenever we take the source how much amount of zinc that is absorbed from the diet that is the bioavailability. So, plants good source uh, good plant sources of zinc it nuts whole grains legumes and yeast. Fruits and veg vegetables are not a good source of uh, zinc. So, if a person is a vegetarian and largely take uh, any uh, uh, plant based uh, uh, proteins and especially if the diet is low in proteins, uh, they are at susceptible for zinc deficiency compared to a non-vegetarian person. So, that means a vegetarian person uh, likely uh, should uh, take uh, zinc supplementation to maintain the optimal level. Note that uh, zinc is available in most of the multivitamin and multimineral supplement supplements that we take. Uh, recommended dietary allowance for zinc is uh, 10 milligrams per day in males and uh, 8 milligrams per day in females. Uh, symptoms for zinc deficiency it includes like frequent infections, it can be respiratory infections, skin infections and then the loss of hair we call it as alopecia and then the decrease in the appetite like not feeling like uh, eating food. Then the decreased sense of smell and taste, slow growth delayed wound healing process these are some of the uh, deficiency manifestations of zinc. Now, the zinc supplementation in large doses it can lead to diarrhea, abdominal cramps and vomiting, but as we decrease that supplementation so the, these toxic signs may go off and sometimes excess zinc supplementation may lead to copper and iron deficiency. So, that means we need to be careful about our supplementation. So, that is about uh, of vitamin C and zinc especially their role in immune mechanism. I hope this video has helped you in understanding what exactly is uh, zinc and vitamin C's role in our body. Thanks for watching and um, if you like this video please give thumbs up. If you have any comment put that in the comment section below and also if you have not subscribed to this channel please consider subscribing to this channel. Thank you and I will see you in my next video till then.
Eu te amo.